Here I'm going to give you three examples of how to use the future value function within Excel. The first two examples will be kind of straightforward and you may have already seen them. The third one will be a little bit trickier but not too difficult. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we've got. Here, um, the first question is with an interest rate of 6%, what will the value of a $5 million investment today be worth in six years? Uh, okay, so I've got the future value function right here with all the arguments and I've covered this more in depth in a previous uh, lesson. So I'm not going to do it too much here. So let's dive right in and I'll explain as we go. Equals future value, open parentheses. Now the first thing is the rate. Well, there's only one rate listed in this question, the interest rate. So that's a pretty easy one to figure out. So we just put it as 6%, 0.06 important to put this as a decimal in this formula. You don't want to put it as just six because it's not going to work right. So comma. Now the number of periods. Well we want to figure out what it's going to be worth in six years. So our periods are going to be within years. We're going to keep it simple for that for now. So years, number of periods, six. Comma. What about the payment? So right now we're on the payment. Well we're not going to get any payment. We're not going to be paying into this. This is not an annuity. So that is going to be zero. But we do know the present value. So we need to put that in. The present value of the investment is five million dollars. So that's what it would cost us today. It's going to cost us five million. So if you're uh, doing all of your numbers in millions, you could just put five there. But I'm going to go ahead and put the full number, 5 million. And that's really all that you need for the future value function. So I'm going to hit Control Enter. And we see that the investment in six years is going to be worth a little over $7 million. Now you'll notice that the number is negative. In order to fix that, you can double click the function. And what you could do is put a negative sign in front of the PV, the present value. And uh, that would work because present value is considered to be what you have to pay today or what your cash outflow would be. Cash outflow is going to be negative because it's taken away from you basically. Um, so you could do that here or depending on your preferences or perhaps the preference of your boss, you could simply put the negative sign in front of the entire function. Both of them are going to serve to make that number positive. So I put it here instead both positive. Doesn't change anything at all, just how you can get the negative to a positive number. So just put a negative sign in front of the PV or the FV function, future value function. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the second example right here, FV2. The second example is if I invest $1,000 per year for 10 years with an interest rate of 3.55%, how much will I have in 10 years? So the easiest way to think about this is to say that you have a bank account, you're going to put $1,000 in that account for every year, and the account generates 3.55% interest rate. Now the uh, question may be worded differently, but the uh, premise of this is basically it's just a basic annuity problem, right? Same amount of money for so many years. So equals FV, open parentheses. Now the first thing we need is the rate. The rate is going to be the interest rate. Pretty easy for this example. 0.0355. Now remember, put it as a decimal, not a whole number. Comma. Now the number of periods. Well, we're keeping everything simple for these examples, so the number of periods here is going to be 10 years. So, simply 10. Comma. Now the payment. Since this is an annuity, the payment will not be zero. Because remember, the payment represents an annuity problem, right? So if you have an annuity, you're going to be filling something in for the payment. And our annuity is $1,000. So our payment, or our PMT right here, is 1000 right there. Now we don't have a present value, because say we have no money in the bank account and we're just opening it. So we don't need to put anything for the present value amount right here. So simply close the parentheses, hit control enter, and we can see that in 10 years it's going to be worth about 11,800, 11,750. 
Now once again, we got that negative number here, it's red with parentheses. To fix it, just go put a negative in front of the future value function. And uh, there you go. Now let's go ahead and move on to the third example, FV3. All right, so for this one, it goes like this. If I can buy something now for $1,000 or that same item two years from now for $1,100, but I expect my the inflation to be 4.5% um, per year, which item or what at what time should I buy this item? So should I buy it now for $1,000 or should I wait two years and buy it for $1,100? In any other example, it could be put down to months, right? So this could be instead of two years, it could be two months. Um, it would be the same thing, the formula is not going to change. So don't worry about the actual time frame, because remember, two years or two months is still just two periods. It's just important to remember or to know if this 4.5% inflation is set for a year, as it is here, or for a month. So just make sure that the uh, inflation rate is the same as the time frame. Now that goes for all future value examples. It's just a little bit more important for this because you're probably not going to wait two years to buy something if you need it uh, now. So anyway, let's go ahead and do this one. Equals FV, open parentheses. Now our rate, we're going to stick with this example, two years, inflation at 4.5% per year. So the rate is going to be the inflation rate. 0.045 comma now we need the number of periods 2 for 2 years comma now we need the payment but it's not an annuity problem so the payment number is going to be 0 comma we need the present value well the present value is what you can buy it for right now so I can buy this item for $1,000 right now. So that is its present value, 1,000. So let's go ahead and hit Control Enter. And you can see that in two years, it will be worth $1,092.03. So in fact, it is cheaper for you to purchase, or it's less expensive if you purchase this item right now as opposed to two years from now. Now this question assumes a lot, right? Assumes that uh, you know the inflation rate, that you know what it's going to cost in two years for the item, and that the item's only been adjusted um, up to 1100 and not more or less. But it doesn't really matter because this is a question you may or may not see. So we also have a negative number right here. Remember, two ways to make it positive, right? Put a negative sign in front of the present value because it's cash outflow. We'll put a negative sign in front of the future value equation. Now, what's important to note is that when you use cell references for all these arguments, so say the present value, this 1,000, is in its own cell, that cell may already have a negative number in it. So it's important to adjust where you put the negative sign depending on how you have your spreadsheet set up. This is just a basic example. I can put the negative sign anywhere to turn that into a positive number. So those are three um, relatively basic examples of how to use the future value function in Excel.